Hello and welcome to the live streamer backstage podcast. I'm Alec Johnson and this is a weekly show where I interview fellow live streamers to understand how they are using live streaming as a tool in their business and to discover the tech, the gear and the software that they use to produce great live shows. My guest today is Chris Stone from Cast Ahead and also with Jim Fuse. They form Dealcasters. And whilst you'll find Chris creating content and posting on all the social platforms, as any good content creator does, a primary area of focus for him is Amazon, where he live streams and also creates product videos. Now, when I first heard that creators could join the Amazon Influencer Program and stream to Amazon as live sellers, it conjured up images of shopping channels like QVC and all of the connotations that go along with that, good or bad, I'll let, let you decide there. But what I quickly learned though from Chris and Jim's work is that there is indeed another way to approach, approach this. And it's fair to say that I would not be live streaming the recording of this podcast to Amazon right now were it not for them. Similarly, when it comes to recorded content on Amazon, creating videos that appear on product pages, there's also a different pr approach required that you would use ordinarily when creating content on YouTube. And once again, I've taken cues from Chris here too in planning how I'm gonna approach this. What I think really made them stand out to me was the fact that their focus was not actually on selling as I'd assumed it would need to be on Amazon, but rather very clearly on serving shoppers and helping them make informed decisions. Their integrity and caring nature clearly shines through. Chris has been a big inspiration to me as I navigate the world of the Amazon Influencer Program, as I'm sure he has been to many others as well. Seeing his work and hearing him on other shows talking about the Amazon Influencer Program really got me fired up about it and eager to dive in. I was also want to just mention on this point just how generous and caring Chris is when it comes to helping others on the program. Always happy to share advice and information. He clearly has an abundance mindset. There's so much to talk about with Chris, not least his professional background in live streaming production for corporate giants. Did I not mention that? Uh, well, let's talk about that too. So without further ado, let's welcome Chris Stone. Hey, Chris. Great hey, to have you here. Alec, how are you? Thank you so much for having me. This is uh, this is going to be a blast. I love talking with fellow tech nerds <laughs> like yourself, and I mean that in the best possible way, uh, of course. Thank you so much for having me on your show. You, sir, have been a great inspiration to me and to Jim and to many of these other content creators that we have in our Venn diagram. And, uh, sir, I appreciate you having not only having me on this show, but for the years of expertise and wisdom that you have passed along uh, in in many a video that uh, <laughs> I've watched and watched and liked and subscribed and <laughs> done all of the things. So thanks so much, Alec. I appreciate oh, it. Thank you. Thank you. Really appreciate you being here. And uh, yeah, always uh, always good to have a, a geek out with a, a fellow geek. <laughs> That's, yes. That's geek. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, so perhaps you could start then by just giving everyone a little bit of background. And I mentioned, you know, some of the professional live streaming background. What's been your route, route then into, into live streaming? Just t tell us a little bit about yourself and, and how you got into all of this. Yeah, real quickly, my name is Chris Stone. I'm at Cast Ahead at castahead.net. And I work with motivated entrepreneurs to make a show because most people, they don't want to know all of the stuff that goes back in the, you know, the restreams and the clicks and the RTMPs and the graphics and the PNGs and all of the uh, stuff like that. They just want to show and that's what we do for them. And I started about 29 years ago in the music business working for Sony Music before digital music was a gleam in David Geffen's eye. I was selling uh, records and cassettes and putting up posters in a thing called record stores and traveling throughout the southeastern part of the United States and doing that and worked my way up in that company and had to do a number of pivots. We've used that word a number of times over the past three years, the word pivot. Mm -hmm. And, you know, music moved in a completely different direction when a thing called Napster was... Uh, uh, was was put out. But uh, thankfully, a thing called iTunes saved the music industry. And I quickly realized that I had to transition into digital music, which I did rather quickly. And then I jumped onto another sinking ship in Sony, which was called the mobile music industry. You remember those things called ringtones when you would pay $2.49 <laughs> for something that would play 30 seconds of a song on your phone? Well, I was a part of that and doing that for Sony. And uh, based here in Atlanta, where AT&T, a mobile giant, was. And so I ran the mobile industry for, or the mobile business for, uh, for Sony for a number of years. But 
saw that that was, like I said, another sinking ship, moved into the streaming music business. And so I became the sort of the conduit between Sony Music and companies like Spotify. And so my position uh, in, in doing that was to take uh, what artists were doing and already doing, which was creating. They were content creators and making them look good on platforms. And so I had a 28-year head start on being a content creator and helping uh, other people and producing, uh, not necessarily music producing, uh, but producing them on platforms so that they could look good, so that they could uh, live the life that they wanted to live on their terms. And so uh, being a father and a husband, uh, first and foremost, uh, and working in the music industry and Sony being a corporate giant that they were, wanted me to move to New York uh, or LA or Nashville. And uh, I decided I wanted to be a father and a husband. So I started this business uh, and working with podcasters and live streamers uh, because really, truly, they are content creators, just like musicians are content creators. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to do this. And uh, I did that, started that about three years ago. And here we are, uh, partnered up with my buddy, Jim Fuse, as you mentioned in the introduction. And uh, we started to do a show called Dealcasters on Amazon. And our intention for that show was to only uh, produce, was to show, was to play in the sandbox that was this new thing called Amazon Live, an Amazon influencer program, and to show that we can do a production to show other people, perhaps clients that might be attracted to this, to say, hey, this person works for Fusion Marketing, this person works for Cast Ahead, maybe they could do my show. What we found out relatively quickly was that it was a differentiator for us as, a content, cre as content creators. We could say to someone who uh, was a pretty well-known person in, in the industry and they had written a book or whatever, and we could say, hey, we have a show on Amazon. And then they would give us this funny look and we would say, would you like to come on our show? And of course, people wanted to come on an Amazon show. That's, uh, that's a complete and total differentiator. Lots of people have podcasts, but not many people, at least at the time, had Amazon shows. So it became a differentiator for us. And we uh, were able to get some, some fantastic guests and sort of uh, set ourselves apart uh, in that industry. And once we found out how much uh, how beneficial that this program was. We couldn't wait to tell people. And so that's what we did. Uh, we went uh, and started evangelizing for this platform because we felt like talking to content creators like you, Alec, uh, uh, Kelly Nomal Mirabella, Jeff C., just a, a ton of uh, Professor Nez, all of these people just kind of evangelizing for this program to say, hey, we need better content on this platform. And look, you can make some money probably more money than you're making on YouTube by doing these things because there at the time there wasn't not only was the pool very shallow in terms of the quantity of influencers on the on the platform but the quality was just kind of it wasn't just because it was 720p versus 1080 or 4k there there was some people that had not even gone live ever before and they were going live on that platform. And, and so that's why we were kind of like tapping other creators like, hey, you know, come on over here. Uh, you, you, we, we want this thing to thrive. And sure enough, it, it started to. And uh, we did a, uh, an event at PodFest and VidFest in Orlando a number of months ago. And uh, it was for us, it was success because we, uh, we were having people sign up for Amazon Live in the room. Uh, they, were, they were getting on the influencer program and they have started to flourish in their journeys. I mean, that's so cool. There's, I, I mentioned in the, the intro that whole thing of, you know, you evangelizing it and, and, and being so supportive of other people and bringing people in. That, that's not something that should be overlooked, to be honest, because there's a lot of people that might be on a platform where they see that everyone else is making, you know, terrible content uh, and they are the one that's got the ability to make something that stands above everything else. Um, that they, A lot of people <laughs> would think, uh, well, let me just keep this area to myself and not tell anyone about right. it. It's the fact that you've been so open and sharing about the things that you've learned and actually literally making huge efforts to try and pull other people into it, knowing that, you know, that is actually going to help the platform grow. But it's it is it is the the abundance mentality that uh, that is sadly lacking in a lot of other people. So I've always just really appreciated that with you. It's true. It's true. And thank you for for saying that. There are a number of people that have that scarcity mindset, and and Alec, uh, Jim, and myself have gotten lots of flack for it publicly. Mm -hmm. 
right. uh, for for doing that. Like, shut up, guys! Stop talking about Amazon. <laughs> like, you're 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 taking you're taking food out of my family's mouths. Mm-hmm. Really, those are those are those are actual words that right. are, that people are saying to us. Uh-huh. And I don't know how to how to say something back to a person like that other than just let's let's just be better, right? Uh-huh. I mean, I just don't, you know, I I, I want to help everyone, right? And I I just don't. I feel like the the mentality of saying, um, "Hey, I want this for myself," uh, just it never ends well. No. It really just doesn't, uh-huh. and it, it hasn't ended well ever for me. I've made mistakes like that before. And, uh, so we just, we took the opposite approach because I, Alec, I think it had a lot to do with us. Our original intention and still is our original intention is not to make money mm-hmm. on this platform. It isn't, it absolutely isn't. And yes, we have don't, you know, don't tell Amazon because, you know, maybe they'll stop paying us, but <laughs> I, you know, our, our intention is clearly it is 100% to get on this platform and show people what we can do and help them. Mm-hmm. And, you know, what I don't know, second or third show, we started doing something with, um, it was uh, Chris Kermitzos who headed up PodFest. And we started talking about headphones and microphones. And of course, he's a podcast geek, but he has a great story with a book, uh, Stay Ugly. And, and there was someone that was chiming in and they were asking about headphones. And we started talking about that with them. And they were talk, talking about starting a podcast. And we recommended that maybe they should get two different types of headphones because you never know if one's comfortable for your ears or maybe you want this type or whatever because Amazon has a great return Mm -hmm. uh, policy. And things got a little quiet on the chat for a while and we started back in our conversation and our interview. And near the end of the conversation, the person chimed in and said, I'm starting my podcast tomorrow. I bought these two headphones. I bought this microphone. Thank you so much for your help. And that meant the world. Mm-hmm. It didn't mean the world that we probably got like six dollars for yes. whatever that was, uh-huh. right? It meant the world because we helped that person, mm-hmm. and other people saw that, and they were like that, you know. And they would still to this day. That's why we do it. That's not. It's not because of of the money that's made or the influence that we got to speak at Podfest or all of that kind of stuff. It really isn't the intention. I think we we keep we keep that mindset, and only good things can happen. I'm totally with you there. I mean, it's I've had a couple of experiences like that when I've been doing a stream on Amazon and then somebody comes in about the product I'm talking about and they've got some questions and you can give them your like honest feedback and your honest answer and uh, you know, maybe they don't actually go and buy it because it's not what they wanted. You know, I've had a few occasions where someone right. says, can this do X, Y, and Z? And I'm like, well, it can't actually. And you think, well, I've just saved them a headache there. So yes. it's, it's, it is pretty uh, pretty amazing when you get that sort of instant feedback as well in the, in the sort of chat of a, of a live stream on Amazon. I Absolutely. Just... I, I, yeah, go ahead. No, sir. Go on. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I just think, I think uh, people talk about this platform and now Walmart has a creator program that's, uh, mm-hmm. that got launched uh, this week and, and we know Best Buy is, is on their way and, and Target and some of these others. And, and, and a lot of people look at it as live selling and you talked about QVC and the <laughs> Home Shopping Network and, and all of that stuff. And I think uh, as content creators, and I know you have a lot of content creators that are that listen and, and watch to this show, watch the show. They think that maybe they have to completely change mm-hmm. what they're doing, um, and that they have to become this thing where where they have to be actually hardcore selling uh, the the things and drilling through the carousel. And, and folks, this show right now is live on Amazon, and we're talking about this, and we're hoping that you're getting value out of this conversation. Yes, if you chat and you ask me about a Sure SM7B, I'd love to tell you about it. But I think if we look at it from a situation where it's not life selling or life solving, mm-hmm. ultimately, when Jim and I for years were working with clients, it always ended up with something that they maybe had to purchase. Mm -hmm. And 99% of the things were available on Amazon. And it just became this real, you know, troublesome situation, this pain point with all of our clients. We're like, you know what, what was that? And can you just buy it here? Here's my credit card. Can you just buy it and and have it sent to me? And that kept happening over and over and over again. It was a huge clunky process. And that's why when we looked at this, we looked at, this is a solution. This being live on this platform can solve those issues, not just for the people that we want to do business with, but for the people we don't want to do business with. Like if you want to do it yourself, here's how you can do it. 
We're going to consult and train and and do all the things live. Uh, show you how to do mic technique. Show you, tell you why you need to have sound isolation over your ears so the sound doesn't go back into your mic. These are all the things that anyone could Google and jump on YouTube and get. But we're going to do it live on this platform. And if you happen to buy some of the things that we're talking about on your way out the door, cool. Mm -hmm. You know, then we get, you know, two to 4% or whatever it is of, of what you get. And why shouldn't we get that? We helped you uh, along the way. Mm -hmm. And it's, I, you know, it's, it's really just kind of the, the mindset that uh, we've always had and that we always want to continue to have. So it's, it's not something where if you're a content creator and you're thinking about Amazon and you're like, well, I have a show and it, and it doesn't have anything to do with selling. I, I would I would venture that if you've put an affiliate link in your show notes of your YouTube video, you're selling. You're just selling in the wrong spot. Mm -hmm. it, it you know people are on YouTube not to buy. You know they come to Amazon to buy something. If you're talking about something, why not serve it up to them? They're probably going to go to Amazon anyway, and somebody else is going to get your money. Mm -hmm. So it's a, a good distinction that is as to you know these sort of motivation of people being on the individual platforms and obviously you know people are on amazon to buy so it's the best place to actually help them to make those those decisions that's right for, for sure i just want to go back slightly to uh, the sort of technical background you've got in live streaming and, and how that sort of translated across because you know everyone i speak to on on this show and you know in the, the live streaming space we we always see what they're doing in the you know the live streaming or content creation space but invariably they're always bringing a, a load of skills from uh, you know past experience that is they're bringing to the table uh, and I, i'm mm. always interested to to learn like how that sort of translates over to the kind of live stream we were doing now so in your case from the the sort of corporate live streaming and what were the sort of skills that you needed to to find to actually you know augment that and to to bring it onto this this sort of platform how, how did that work out for you yeah oh god that's a that's a great question so I had been, I, I call myself, a, to steal the, uh, the words of Ian Anderson Gray, uh, a recovering perfectionist. Okay. And um, I, as you can see, uh, for those who are listening on the podcast, there's a bunch of uh, uh, guitars, basses that are hanging behind me. And so I had played in bands, uh, you know, ever since I was 14 years old and somebody needed a bass player. Everybody always needs a bass player. And so I was like, all right, I'll be the bass player. Fell in love with the instrument. And if you've talked to anyone who's a musician or someone that has spent a, a, a hours and hours and hours and hours on a craft, it, it, there is a certain type of person uh, that if you plop them in front of a piece of software or you plop them in front of a piece of gear um, and they have a passion for doing whatever it is, I'm always that person that loves to take things apart and put them back together again. Um, there's usually parts left over, but it still works. And so I, I you know, I'm I'm kind of that that person. And so my mentality, I applied that to to live streaming. And my recovering or my perfectionism was something that I really had to get over because I wasn't doing enough. I wasn't quantitatively doing enough. I would spend hours on something and I would put it out or uh, I would be, I would not go live because something wasn't right or all of those things. And the beauty of live video is once you go, it's done. And I'm sure there's been plenty of times already where I've said, um, and you know, and repeated phrases and all of those things. And as a podcaster and a podcast editor, which is a, my original uh, most of what I did in my business was editing podcasts. And I would edit these podcasts so much that there wasn't any ums or errs or anything. And it, I, we just spent hours and hours and hours on a 40 minute podcast. And it just was, I don't want to say it was a waste of my time. I learned by going through that, by going through all of those reps. But really what hit it for me is I heard a speaker, his name is uh, Craig Rochelle, and he does the uh, Global Leadership Summit, and he talked about an acronym, and the acronym is GETMO, which stands for Good Enough to Move On. Mm -hmm. And it hit me. I was spending all of this time thinking that I was going, uh, that it, the, 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 the axis was going this way, that my, re my return on investment was going up. And I, all I was doing was just a long, flat line. Mm -hmm. And what I had to do was he called bend the curve. So uh, it, it really is, listen, this, you're going to have to cut the cord on this and you're going to have to go. 
And so that's what live video did for me, Alec, is I would go live and yes, I made mistakes, absolutely made mistakes, 100%. I'll go back to a video I, I did a year ago and it's, just, it's, it's cringy. But I, at the same time, I am inspired by how far it's, it's come since then. And so that's what I'm using it to sort of overcome that, that perfectionism. And so Dealcasters was this sandbox for, for us to play in. We got to get into this thing. And, and as you know, like Amazon is about grabbing people's attention, right? So mm -hmm. if, you're, if your live show is, is showing up on a product page for the Roadcaster Pro 2, and uh, your your Rome Wilkerson, Rome knows tech, who's who's this fantastic, uh, uh, who does this fantastic show on the platform. And there's all these pattern interrupts. You've got cameras coming in here, and he's showing the Yolo blocks live, and then he's doing this deep fake where all he comes, his, his face becomes this baby, and like all of these things were going on. I was like, I was being inspired by all of this stuff that was happening on the platform, and you didn't have to worry about it being on Facebook and. In all of these other places, you can say, all right, this is intended to grab people's attention mm -hmm. and I could do creative things with it. And that's what stretched those muscles. That That's what keeps, you know, kept me doing things like doing intro videos, entertaining people. And so, I mean, I'm not even sure if that completely answered your question, but um, yeah, that's that's really, you know, how I've kind of utilized this to, to create the, the shows that I do. Uh -huh. It's there's so many similarities there between my path as well, because that was the whole reason why I got into uh, doing the one take videos was to get over that perfectionism. And it, th th that get mo that you just mentioned is, is perfect because I often say that I'm still not at all happy with anything I put out, but I'm happy with being unhappy about it. <laughs> so whereas before I would yeah. sweat over the little details. Um, now I just think, well, you know what? I'm the only one that's actually noticing these slight imperfections anyway. Uh, the other people are just only interested in the content and the message and the, you know, what you've got to deliver. And I think people get too hung up on trying to make, you know, something totally polished when it's not, as you say, the, the, it's diminished returns after a certain point. So I love that. <laughs> I had not heard it that yeah. get before, but... I just want to take a moment to talk about Ecamm Live. This is the live production Mac software that we're using to live stream and record this podcast. In my opinion, it is the best live streaming and recording software on the market today. So what exactly does it do? Well, essentially, it allows you to control the content that you're including in your video, be it a live stream or a recorded video. And you do this by building out different scenes that contain the content that you want to show. This content may be a feed from your camera or indeed multiple cameras, or you may be sharing a screen, which is what I do a lot of in my tutorial style videos that I make for my Take One Tech YouTube channel. You can share the screen from a second computer or maybe even a gaming console if you are a live streaming gamer. And just as we are doing in this podcast, you can also bring in guests using Ecamm Live's built-in interview mode where guests can join from a browser and you can then incorporate their video and audio into your production. Finally, you can add all kinds of additional graphical and animated overlay elements and even movies to really add a level of branded professionalism that would be hard to achieve in any other way. The real magic happens though when you hit that record or go live button because then you are able to seamlessly switch back and forth between all of the scenes that you've created and indeed this is how all of the videos have been created for my Take One Tech YouTube channel and the reason it's called Take One Tech by the way is because all of the videos are made in one take with no edits. I just hit record, make the video and as soon as I hit the end recording button the file is there and ready to be uploaded straight to YouTube. What I love about Ecamm is not just just the ease of use that it has when compared to other live streaming software, but also the greater flexibility it gives in terms of layouts and designs that you can create for your shows when compared to some of the hardware streaming solutions. And one thing that makes Ecamm great specifically for podcasts is the fact that it has the ability to record isolated audio tracks. So once we finish recording this podcast, I'll have a separate audio file for me, my guests, and any other audio tracks that have been a part of the recording. That makes the editing and repurposing of the content for the podcast so so much more streamlined. It does have another little trick up its sleeve though, and that is its virtual camera feature. This allows you to take the video output from Ecamm live straight into communication apps like Zoom, Microsoft Teams, Discord, and so on. This means that rather than just appearing in Zoom meetings with a regular camera feed, you can now show up with all of the amazing production values that Ecamm live gives you and deliver that straight into your Zoom meeting. And trust me, when you rock up to a Zoom meeting with Ecamm, <laughs> the other participants will be truly amazed. So whether for live 
live streaming, recorded video content, or to level up your Zoom game, I highly recommend you give Ecamm Live a go. You can get a free trial by going to takeonetech.io slash Ecamm. That's E C A double M. Takeonetech.io slash Ecamm. And of course, you can find a link to that in the show notes as well. You will certainly not regret giving it a go. Now let's get back to the show. Yeah, and I love the fact that the Take One Tech and and the the principles for this it really it really flows into exactly what we're talking about is, you know, because I've watched uh, hours of your videos because you know I'm like you know and I, and I I'm not just saying this to blow smoke up your backside because I'm on your show but like some of the stuff you you talk about with with Zoom the the I, I watched hours of stuff that you've done on the on the Rodecaster Pro two to learn how this thing is is put together how I can incorporate chat with how, you know with this, what's going on with Zoom and eCam and all of those things that we all use right and I I am I was shocked to find out a lot of these videos you barely even edit I, I don't they're, edit any of them actually. They're, they're all one I take. Mean, so <laughs> it's yeah. incredible. Uh-huh. That's incredible. That's a that and and you know there. I I think it's it's overkill. Personally, I can do. It. I'm I'm guilty of it. Like I'll get sometimes I get in the flow and I'm like, God, how long have I spent on this? Mm-hmm. And I just I just got to go. You know what? I'm done. I I got it. I got to get it out. And somebody will come back later and just tell me about a video that I did like six months ago. Oh my God, that was you know. And they'll talk about this, and I was like. God, I was I was about to spend like probably six or eight hours more on that particular edit, mm-hmm. but I didn't, and it impacted someone. So I, you know, I think, and plus, I feel like there's a lot that you learn along the way mm-hmm. that you just get better at. And so, you know, your second video is going to be better than your third video is going to be better than your fourth video, and now you're on video probably six thousand or whatever, <laughs> and um, you know you're just you're just going to get better from it. It's incredible that all of those videos are one take. So you're doing you're building everything on eCamp, yeah, right? that, and, and that's just, right. And Stream Deck, mm-hmm. yeah, Amazing. they're all just like little mini mini live streams. But the other thing for me was it's not just the editing that I would take ages over. It was if that I knew that I was going to be editing, I would take a lot more takes. <laughs> so, cause I would just try and get mm-hmm. the, the perfect one. And then that would usually cause more problems for me later when I came to try and stitch them all together, they wouldn't quite fit. Mm. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> I just prefer li- live to tape as it were. <laughs> so I'm curious, here I am, I'm switching the seats here, Alec, <laughs> a little bit, because this is you and I are, you and I are very similar mm-hmm. in, in this. So I, I'm on a number of shows and have people on my shows and then I'll listen to something or watch something. And how do you, from a one take perspective, work on your speech? So in other words, you know that you may end up saying, you know, or like, or Mm -hmm. I don't know, whatever, whatever crutch word you may have or thing that maybe has bothered you. And and as a recovering perfectionist, you probably could name some, I won't, (laughs) but do you do that in, in, in mentally? Uh, do you go back and say, okay, I did this, so I'm going to work on this before I do my one take? Or do you just kind of just keep going? Um, I don't let it stop me, but I do try and notice those things. So um, mm. I've just said um, there, for example, but there's a few other little phrases yeah. that I've got. I always say, let's have a little look. <laughs> That's one of the things that I say that I don't necessarily need to say. But um, I do try and consciously note that. You'll notice as well that at the uh, my my videos that I did at the beginning were um, tended to be a lot more rambling. <laughs> so uh, it would take me longer to get to the point. So I've tried to work on that a little bit, but it's just mm-hmm. a case of trying to, um, trying to, trying to practice. And like you say, it's just an evolution, isn't it? Getting better as we, as we go along. But absolutely. Uh-huh. I love it. <laughs> I love, I love hearing that. I love hearing that process. And I think other people hearing that too, you know, somebody, somebody could be listening to this right now and in the whole imposter syndrome and, mm-hmm. and they may look at you and, you know, or, you know, me or whatever, and they may go, geez, I could never be able to be an Amazon influencer or I can never, you know, do this or that. But when you hear about some of the same things that maybe they're going through, you think you got a shot, you mm-hmm. know, and you do, you absolutely do. I think now uh, it's, it's an incredible time. It really is an incredible time. I mean, the fact that you can be an Amazon influencer with 2,000 followers or whatever, I mean, I don't know if that's exact the exact number. I mean, Amazon could have changed it 24 times since we started mm-hmm. the show. But, you know, less than a million, 
right? I mean, who thought that you could be a quote unquote influencer and make money talking about brands and having a porch full of brown boxes that people have sent you Mm -hmm. with only 2000 followers? That's Mm -hmm. crazy. And uh, a lot of people looked at it and unfortunately, a lot of people look at it and go, okay, I'm doing this to make money, which we talked about earlier. It's like, well, if that's your only reason why, I don't know, you know, I don't know if this is this is for you or not, but I think it's a crazy, crazy, uh, exciting time to be in this space. And, and, you know, especially with what's going on with, with Walmart. Now there's sort of a real comp, you know, competitor here. Mm -hmm. Um, I, you know, real ish, you know, it's still, you know, Walmart online sales and Amazon online sales. There's a, there's a bit of a chasm there, but I think it's, it's exciting nonetheless, at least there's someone else here in Mm -hmm. this game. That yeah. has supply chain that can ship products. Uh, unlike you know, like Facebook is, you know, has decided that they're going to get out of it. And uh, you know, I know there's you know TikTok is talking about all this stuff. But I mean, are people going to give their credit card to TikTok? And you know, for for shopping, I don't know, not as many. Uh-huh. And so it's it's an exciting time for uh, for content creators for for sure. There's something you mentioned there that I thought might be worth just sort of laying out in case uh, people are totally unfamiliar with the Amazon Influencer Program. And and this is this thing (laughs) of you needing to have some platform somewhere else. And uh, for me, I think I got accepted when I was about 1,900 followers on YouTube. So I used my YouTube thing there. And I'd been trying it, you know, since I was on 500. (laughs) So I just kept applying. But maybe you could just talk about a little bit about the sort of process and then uh, what you can actually do on the platform because there is this sort of a couple of different elements to it. Perhaps you could just talk to that. Yeah, hundred percent. Blocking and tackling for sure. So, I think uh, first thing you should realize is, yeah, you, if for Amazon, you you've got to qualify. And so, uh, the first things first, it's it's four pr- uh, platforms. So pick your one that you've got the the highest impact or subscribers or followers on. That's YouTube, uh, Facebook Business, uh, Instagram, or TikTok. So one of those four. And we believe it's plus or minus 2,000 is that sort of magic number. But I think it may, the range may be lower uh, to higher depending. And what they're going to do is, is you give them your account and uh, you don't give them like, you know, the ability to, to post on your, on your platforms. They just want to be able to go in and they're going to see what your engagement's like. And so, you know, I don't... I don't work for Amazon. I don't have a direct uh, line to Amazon. I don't know exactly uh, what their criteria is other than it's around 2,000 subscribers and you got to have some activity. Uh, You don't really even need to have gone live and do have done live streaming, believe it or not, because there's some people that when they get accepted, they've never been live. Maybe they've been live on their phone uh, somewhere. So this is this sort of speaks to, and we'll talk about the the other elements uh, to what you do here. Is if you're thinking about potentially doing it, and you already have your live streaming game together, you know you have a, and I know a lot of the the people that that watch and and listen to you, Alec, do. And so, if you just have a you know a webcam, you know an HD webcam and a laptop and a dynamic microphone in, in, a, in a small dead room with a lamp behind you, uh, you are already a hundred steps ahead of a lot of uh, influencers, quote unquote, on the platform. So that should make you uh, excited to bolt that on Amazon to your existing multi-stream uh, for, uh, for your show. But once you get approved uh, from one of those four platforms, uh, you get a shop page. And so the first thing you should do with a shop page is put up, you know, it's a lot like a YouTube channel. You put up your your banner. You're going to have an avatar. Uh, um, I should say for all of this, you need to be what's called an Amazon associate. So that's their affiliate program. And most people already uh, are Amazon affiliates. And so that's usually uh, not an issue. But if you're not yet, it's free. Just go in there and make sure on your Amazon uh, associates that you're putting every website that you would ever post an affiliate link onto. Don't ever like go, well, I'm not going to put my TikTok on there. Or I'm not going to put my blog on there. Just wherever you think you might be posting a link, make sure you post it in there because associates will look and if they see a link uh, that you posted somewhere, like on your Twitter or whatever, and you did not put it on your associates, you could get in trouble for that. So, um, so anyway, uh, make sure you're you're good on the associates program, and then 
Um, after you're approved for influencers, get your shop set up. And then we always recommend the first thing that someone should do when they're approved as an Amazon influencer is to make three product videos. Uh, the reason why is this. Your product videos will make you some money. You already have products chances are in your home, probably sitting on your desk, probably staring at you in the face right now, that you could do a two-minute video telling somebody all about the things of that product uh, that make it great for you, uh, that you, how you use it, what you, why you use it for, what are the certain elements of there, answer the problems that somebody has when they're watching on the page, uh, that, and just make a two-minute video. Make it really, you know, decent quality. It doesn't have to be, you know, uh, Alec or Chris quality. <laughs> it could be, you know, something that's just clear, doesn't have choppy audio, uh, is just nice. And you make those three videos and you submit them and wait, mm, it's probably five or six weeks. Um, and then once you get approved for uh, it, what's called shoppable video, then you could start to crank out a bunch more of these videos. So once you, once you submit those three videos for approval, set, set that aside because you're probably not going to hear from them for five or six weeks. Then you start your live stream game. That's where you start to go, okay, I'm going to you know, put together my show. I'm going to learn how to do this, that, or the other. Join a face, the Facebook group that um, we, uh, there's th probably three Facebook groups right now that we uh, really recommend. One is called Amazon Live Creators, which is one that we absolutely love. This run uh, by Monty Weaver, Melody Johnson, and Chris P. Giles. Um, that is a fantastic Facebook group. It's a great source for, uh, for information, and they do live training every Friday. Uh, afternoon at 12 Eastern. And uh, that's that's the first things that I would say once you do get approved uh, to do is shoppable video, set up your shop page, uh, start going live. Um, and, you know, usually, you know, maybe uh, every couple of weeks or whatever, and then uh, join that Facebook group. Once you, uh, once you start going live, you're in what's called Rising Star. And then once you li go live for 90 minutes total, you get to a level called Insider. And when you're Insider, um, then your live streams, when you touch a product on your, um, on your device, your stream shows up on the product page. So that's, that's the, the benefit of being an Insider and going live for 90 minutes is when you do go live on the platform, they'll stick you into the shop page, or I'm sorry, into the product page for the product that you're talking about. And that's why if you go onto Amazon, you start shopping around, you'll see live streams that are embedded on an actual page for a product. That person is an insider or an A-lister and they've clicked that product and they're talking about that particular product. And that's why their live stream is on the page. And uh, then there's uh, just one other level, which is the, the A-lister. And what's, what's the differentiation between that and Insider that, that up, then appears somewhere else, does it, once you get up to, to that level? It's, I know it's quite a longer period to actually get up to there. I'm far away from that with my 77 followers. Yeah. But <laughs> right. So it's 2,000 followers to get to A-list. And mm -hmm. then once you get 2,000 followers, you have to submit. So then you'll go through another sort of approval process to, uh, to be an A-lister. And so as an A-lister, what, what you have is added benefits. You'll get featured on um, the main page. So sometimes you'll go to Amazon.com and you'll see, you know, current daily deals and you'll see an A-lister and their show will be on there. And so you'll get certain benefits there. You'll get um, featured uh, more often uh, on, on the live stream page as well as on other pages. And... Uh, there's some other things that we think are part of it that are not really um, put out there or publicized, which could include additional placement for your product videos. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, we haven't we haven't really found uh, anyone that will tell us that right. uh, exactly. Uh -huh. uh, but I think as an A lister, uh, this is one thing to to think about. You know, getting followers on this platform. A lot of people will get onto the platform and live stream, and then they'll do things like giveaways. Like, uh, you know, we're giving away a $50 Amazon gift certificate every 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. You have to follow to win, right? Um, the platform itself is a little bit mm, uh, dated 
So the chat is really inherent in the browser. There's some workarounds. There's some hacks uh, that you know our friend Kirk Nugent has found yep. found a hack where uh, where the the chat can come on the screen. I know Be Live is a is a uh, is live stream software that has uh, sort of figured out how to get uh, Amazon comments uh, mm-hmm. on your screen. Uh, but in order to have them entered into a contest. You know, and have have them follow you on Amazon. It still is a manual way of doing it. Jim and I have done. Uh, we did a, a big Star Wars thing around May the Fourth, and so we had a, a a wheel that we created and did an ecam scene for it, and we did mm-hmm. a wheel of names, and it still was really manual for us to be able to do that and give away stuff from Sure and from Aaron Condren and some Star Wars right. um, stuff. Um, and so it's it's one of those things where. Uh, a lot of people, I don't want to say game the system, but mm-hmm. they, you know they want to gain as many followers as possible mm-hmm. uh, in order to get to a list. Mm-hmm. And doing that thing, doing that thing where you get a bunch of followers, are they really followers of yours, or are they people that you've just kind of gotten in your mm-hmm. in your funnel, so to speak? Right. And um, Jim and I made a, a conscious decision to um, to really. Tr- to do this as, you know, the followers that we have are people that follow us, Mm -hmm. people that want to be notified of, of our show or people that, that, uh, want to see our show. Right. Um, I, you know, it's like one, you can't do anything with them. It's not like, uh, you know, if you get a hundred thousand followers on Amazon, it's not like you can contact them. It just becomes just this number, you Mm -hmm. know, that, that you might have and, and, you know, a vanity metric and, um, I think the A-list uh, program is has some benefits for sure, um, but we look at we've always looked at this as a long game, Alec. We mm-hmm. always look at this as like a hey, we want to build something viable on on this, and so doing something like you know uh, uh, giveaways and just to try to goose that that uh, subscriber count, it just or follower count, I should say just didn't feel like it was something that that uh, was was really on brand for us but other folks have done it and have been successful with it yeah sure sure um and one of the things you mentioned a little bit earlier as well was about this uh, idea of product boxes showing up for you to uh, do reviews and things <laughs> like that so i want to just talk a bit about uh, brand deals and sponsorships and things like that on the platform mm-hmm. uh, because obviously yeah. you know when you start looking around you know I, first thing i did when i got accepted was looked around my studio and thought made a list of all the different things I could make videos on. Uh, but then obviously yeah. there is, you know, brand deals and sponsorships that you can get for this where people will just be wanting you to talk about their products. What's your approach with that? And um, h- how does that work from a, uh, from a uh, not legal, but, you know, keeping within the rules of Amazon, you know, what you can do on it, what you can accept from people and, and how do you go about that on Amazon? Oh man, great question. Um, so there when you do get approved and you kind of put yourself out there and you start going live and you start putting your product videos on, you will get found. You'll get put on lists and there are sellers galore that will fill your inbox with uh, products. And I will say most of them uh, are not really worthy of, of anything. Again, Jim and I kind of looked at it from the standpoint of um, this is a longer game. You know, we, we, we designated brands that we wanted to work with. Mm -hmm. These are brands that, you know, products that we already use, whether it's Audio Technica or Shure or Rode. Uh, These are, these are brands that, you know, focus right. These are, these are brands that we use. We have all of this stuff in front of us. We're demonstrating this stuff already. Um, and there were a bunch of brands that were coming to us that, you know, maybe competitors or, or, or not of these things, but they just didn't feel like, mm-hmm. um, like we didn't feel right. And so a lot of times we would be like, well, you can send it to us and we'll try it out. And if it works, then we'll talk about it. Well, that usually ended that conversation. Mm-hmm. Right. And so, um, you know, we, we, we took on some products, we started to, you, and there are other influencers that will, it doesn't matter what it is, send it to me. I'm going to do a video. I'm going to do it. It's very much a, you know, sort of a kind of a scattershot mm-hmm. um, thing. And that's fine. I'm not going to say that that's wrong. It's just not what, what we wanted to do. And so you could very well answer all of these emails and say, yes, send this to me. Um, yes, send this to me and it'll cost you this. Um, so there's a, and so there was this big, again, going back to the abundance and scarcity mindset, uh, situation where there was a lot of influencers that say, Hey, stop taking all the products for free. And, you know, because I'm charging these brands, mm-hmm. 
to do videos. And it's like, listen, uh, you know, this is a, this is the wild west and, uh, you know, everyone's got their own sort of thing, but if you're being, um, gaslighted from these brands and they're saying, well, you know, this, you know, Alec took our, our product and, and he didn't ask, you know, to be paid. Why, you know, and they, they actually, th these brands will say that to us. They'll, they'll come to us and they'll say, well, we've given it to this person, this person, this mm -hmm. person. And they said that they didn't want any money. How come you're asking for money? Mm -hmm. It's stuff like that, where it was just like, you know what, we just, we want to be able to work with, you know, viable brands. And mm -hmm. so we had to say no. We said no to a lot of people um, nicely, you know, because you never know. But I think, you know, we were in a situation where we wanted to be able to, our, our brand and what we stood for, uh, for our companies and for dealcasters was much more important in the long run um, that, than just some, you know, $40 microphone that somebody was going to send to us that we got to keep. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it just wasn't, you know, it just wasn't that, the, the thing for us. So um, from a legal standpoint, we have gotten brand deals and um, those brand deals uh, from a legal perspective, I mean, it, it, Amazon's not really involved, right? So it's like, you know, we can have a conversation with a particular brand and say, you know, uh, we're going to feature these particular things, uh, you know, over the course of time. And here are my deliverables for this particular, mm -hmm. uh, these particular items over this particular time. And then we, we do that for that particular brand and then they pay us money, uh, for it, just like any uh, content creator, uh, would do. Um, and you know, as with anything, you work with a higher level brand or, or, or a name, uh, brand, you know, it, it really bodes well for you. Right. It's not you don't have to necessarily say, well, you know, sure or well, you know, road or, or all of these companies. Like if you're going to work with deal casters, <laughs> it's going to cost you, you know, mm -hmm. thousands and thousands of dollars. It's like, you know, I mean, it, it bodes well for us to be able to have a relationship with some of these brands. And they know that as well. And so there's a there's a give and take there for sure in terms of that. And some brands, they need us more than we need them. And so there's those conversations uh, as well. And we have worked with some brands before that we didn't really even know who they were. And now we're just kind of like, okay, this was, this was a good thing. This, these, you know, we got, we ended up, you know, this was, this was fair. We, we delivered things and we actually liked your product, but you know, those, those things are a little fewer and farther between, but as a content creator on the Amazon platform, knowing that there's a lot of sellers and it still is early in this whole influencer thing for Amazon. There's a lot of sellers that are chomping at the bit to get their products in mm -hmm. your hands because they don't have a lot of other things uh, to do other than to hit your email box all day long with all kinds of stuff that you can choose from mm -hmm. that you've never even heard of before. Yep. Uh, that's such a good point because I think that a lot of people when they first get into this or even if it happens just on your YouTube channel or something else where you get a brand that sort of reaches out I say brand loosely <laughs> there um, you almost think like oh this is this is what happens this is how it's done and almost take like those first few yeah. offers or whatever uh, again using the term loosely as you know oh this is the process that you have to go through um, and I know that you know the the number of offers of products and stuff like that, that I was getting suddenly ramped up as soon as I was accepted into Amazon. But I, like you, have got my list of, uh, you know, companies that I want to work with. And yeah. again, it's people I represent. But I think that there's there's certain cues that you can just take from the way that some people approach you as well. I got one the other yeah. day, which uh, first of all, it started with, hey, babe. <laughs> and then it went on oh, to nice. say, <laughs> yeah, I thought that was a bit over familiar. Then it went on to talk <laughs> about how um, uh, we've seen your videos on Amazon and we really love the way that you you present yourself and all this kind of, you know, spiel or whatever um, and then you notice that actually i was cc'd on that email with 60 other people and it wasn't a blank carbon oh copy God. so i'm then yeah. in this chain with 60 other people who got exactly the same f yeah, email <laughs> telling me how uh, great they were as well uh, and then there was people responding to it you know saying like oh well maybe mm -hmm. i could do this maybe I could do that and I'm thinking just like, does that not send off, you know, alarm bells to you that, uh, <laughs> that is that, red flag for sure. Yeah. So you get some really sort of unprofessional stuff coming through as well, but then there is some 100%. stuff that is professional, but it's just kind of not brands that I necessarily want to work with as well. So 
Yeah, really, really yeah, good point there. Yeah, what we've done, uh, and you probably do this already as well, but anybody that, that may be listening um, and, and watching this is, you know, have some boilerplate, um, you know, things that you could, you know, maybe in a Google Doc or something that you can copy and paste and then, you know, adjust them so that you, you know, that you're you're kind of talking to them. But we have this sort of like, all right, when a brand hits you and we're like somewhat interested, it's not a no. Um, you know, this is the email that we send them. Like we need, you know, if, if they can't send you a specific URL of where this product is on Amazon and it's just this, Hey, we've got products and we're a seller and we're one of the top blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. We'd love to work with you. It's kind of like, well, you know, I mean, uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, you asked me out to dinner first, you know, we can't, uh, you know, but I, you know, it, so if they, if that happens, then we're, we're giving them a no thank you, mm -hmm. um, you know, but we would really love to know specifics about exactly what you're talking about. If they're putting you to work already before you guys even know what, what's going on, I think that, it, like you said, is a, is a bit of a red flag. So, uh, you know, we have these boilerplate emails and a lot, and it's very much a, you know, it answers a lot of questions for them that they may have. So, so it lessens the back and forth. So, uh, it's, uh, Hey, we're not in control of what's placed on Amazon. Mm -hmm. When we do a video, we know we can get it up on our product page at that point, uh, our shop page, I should say at that point, it's Amazon's discretion for it to go on a product page. Mm -hmm. When we uh, have an agreement for something to be featured in our live stream, that's different. We have control over that. So I think that there's been some back and forth with brands about that and uh, deliverables. Like, you know, sometimes somebody will say, okay, we're going to send it to you and it should get there by Wednesday. We want the video up by Friday. Mm -hmm. Those are the kind of things where it's like, again, um, you know, we... We're not going to work on on that time frame. We're going to do that. We're going to do this somewhat expeditiously, but you're you're not going to just send us something and tell us that we have to have it done by Friday. We're mm -hmm. gonna we're gonna tell you that we're gonna have it done in a few weeks, or and and if that doesn't work, and we put that all in that first email, and sometimes that disqualifies a ton of brands, and that's okay. That just says to us like they're just not ready yet, and we got to be okay to pass up, you know, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really, uh, really sound advice there. Um, but I know that uh, <laughs> some, some of the things that I've got through as well have just, uh, I've sort of knocked me sideways when you see the expectations that some people do have, like before, as you say, before they've even taken you to dinner, they're already outlining, we need this, 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 and this. It's, it's, right. quite, it's quite, it's, well, it's just laughable when you see some of these things. <laughs> um, from yeah, an, I'm sure it's inexperience, right? Uh -huh. Probably so. Yeah. And from Amazon's point of view, then, when you are getting things where you have got brand deals and you're getting paid, what are the rules around that from Amazon's point of view? You know, it, is this, you have to uh, make that perfectly clear where you have got, you know, sort of paid to make videos or how, what's the line there with, from, from an Amazon's perspective? Well, I think it follows uh, the FTC guidelines just like anything else. So if we were to, if, if, uh, Sure sent me this SMB microphone, which they did, by the way, but these opinions are all my own, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, we, that would be a disclosure. So if, if I were to say, um, you know, start talking about this and I would say, you know, thank you. Like technically the FTC gives you like specific guidelines, but you know, you can add your own little flavor, right? But it generally, people need to know that um, someone sent you this and, um, you know, then they know. And if someone compensated you, you also have to let them know. So I think that's, there's a, there's creative ways of doing it without looking like, uh, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, as long as you say that and you say that in a way that, um, you know, is, is clear, mm -hmm. uh, I think then, then we're moving on. I think, you know, most of the time, um, when we're doing a live show, or we're doing a product video, uh, and we're talking about something, you know, this is the other thing too, Alec, is we spend a lot of our own money. We invest uh, our own money in a lot of these products. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times that's, that's why we're talking with these brands is because we're already using some of their stuff. And I think as a, as a content creator, I know we're getting into a, a you know, a sort of another conversation is I don't look for, oh, geez, the new Rodecaster Pro is coming out. So I'm going to attempt to try to get one of those from Rode. Mm -hmm. Well, if you don't, if you're not already using the products, mm -hmm. I'm not so sure Rode would be all that interested in it. Yes, um, yeah. 
you know? And so I think a lot of times what we'll do is we'll buy something ourselves. We'll invest in, in, mm -hmm. in it because we use it already and we're going to figure out a way to use it. And that will lead to conversations with that particular brand because they're seeing the stuff that we're doing with their products already. Mm -hmm. And so they're like, okay, we like this person. He, you know, he or she understands how to use the Roadcaster Pro. And now we have this new product that's coming out and we want to tap them to be able to use it alongside of some of these other mm -hmm. uh, products. And so it's not just uh, necessarily about um, you know, attempting to work with, uh, you know, a, a great brand. Um, those are, those are fewer and farther between where you don't already have something from that brand, mm -hmm. uh, especially in the tech space, um, and, and expect that you're, you know, going to get a return call from someone and, um, they're going to say, oh, you don't have any of our stuff, but mm -hmm. here's something that costs $1,200. It's, uh, I don't know, the, that's, that's, happens very few times yeah sure uh -huh. and it's it's a lot easier to talk <laughs> in a nice way and positive way about stuff that you actually have got a love for that you've been using for uh, a long time as well mm -hmm. and that's probably yeah. a good point to pivot because i can't believe we're coming up to the top of the hour but i do always like to take a little look behind the scenes and uh, get you to talk through you know what you're using for your streaming setup so um, perhaps you could talk through, okay. you know, what you've got in your your studio. I have a, I actually got a very nice picture that you uh, you sent me as well. So for those listening yeah, there on we go. audio, uh, you can hop over to the video to check out the the image here. But perhaps you can sort of talk through what you've got and the sort of evolution of of this setup as well, perhaps. Yeah, this so this this is very meta for me because I'm actually looking at what the the photo <laughs> that you're seeing right in front of me, which is crazy. Uh, we'll start with what's right in front of my face. Uh, and so you'll see I've got two microphones in front of me. And um, I use two different boom arms. Um, and one here is for my, um, it's a Vivo. And the other is uh, is a, a El Gato Wave. Um, and they're both low profile boom arms. And the reason why I have two microphones is because uh, we'll do a number of videos uh, and live streams especially lately uh, with uh, Shure and with Heil sound microphones where, you know, we'll compare, we'll compare and contrast a uh, particular microphone. So I need to have, you know, another microphone. I, I have a, a Heil boom arm as well that I'll hook on the front of my, of my desk and hover that over as well and pull that down if I need a third. And I don't want to have to keep unscrewing, uh, mm -hmm. you know, microphones from boom arms and unplugging XLR cables and all kinds of stuff like that. So, during a live show, uh, you know, and sometimes Jim will be like, Hey, Chris, how about this? Hey, Chris, how about this? And I'm like, Oh, ah. so, you know, so I have to grab, I have to grab some things. And, and, uh, it's, it's good to have a partner on a show like that, where it's a little complicated. And so he, you know, we can throw it to him. He could throw it to me and mm -hmm. that kind of thing. So that's why I've got two microphones there. And I've got the, uh, the Shure MV7, uh, white noir, Amazon exclusive, uh, microphone there. And that right there is to compare that. And I just did a recent video uh, comparing the MV7 with the MV7X, which is the Shure's uh, Just XLR microphone, which actually sounds, in my opinion, better than the MV7. So um, I'm, o I'm open to argue uh, about that. Uh, but in front of that, of course, uh, you've got to have a uh, Elgato Stream Deck. I've got the XL. I'm, I'm sure, Alec, you probably have 24 Stream Decks in front of you. <laughs> Um, with, uh, with all of that, but, uh, just love the stream deck. It runs the show just like it runs yours, Alec. And, uh, so, uh, we use that, uh, to go between scenes. I use it to do virtual presentations with clients. So I'll put in PDFs, I'll put in videos, I'll do demonstrations. Uh, it just really does. It just really runs everything pretty much in the studio, uh, including lights and, uh, and everything else. So it's a fantastic, uh, piece to, to have as sort of the, the really the cornerstone mm -hmm. of, of running any live show is that next to that, I've got the Roadcaster Pro 2. Um, and, uh, thanks to, uh, Alec, um, I, I actually got this thing to where I can really, uh, I can really get it rocking. Uh, so thank you again, Alec, for all of your, uh, your insight on that. I'll even, uh, maybe, uh, well here, see, I've, I've, okay, here we go. <laughs> Give you some, some applause. Oh, thank you very uh, much. So, so there we go. So there we go. Um, so, and then of course, next to that, I've got the A10 mini pro ISO. Uh, what I do here is uh for instance i will it wasn't ready for this but i'm going to pull up um this 
this this should be uh, the way we do this anyway. So I'll uh, I'll switch over to this. So now this allows me to hook up and switch my phone to my main camera, which is right here. But then I can switch it over to my phone by clicking this button here. And so that allows me to do things like if I want to do any sort of demo on uh, on the Rodecaster Pro, I can do that with um, Filmic Pro is the app that I use, uh, HDMI cable to a dongle there. And I can you know show the Stream Deck if I needed to show the Stream Deck. And then I could show this. How about this for a meta look? This is exactly <laughs> what I'm looking at right here, we're looking down the barrel of the matrix, mm -hmm. ladies and gentlemen, and this is a, a teleprompter. It's a Glide Gear TM, uh, TMP100. I've got a small uh, iPad here, and I use a, an app called uh, Duet Air, which uh, puts it into teleprompter mode, which allows me to take uh, a version of what uh, I could see on the screen and project it right there. And I've got my uh, Sony uh, A6100 behind it so that when I look right at the teleprompter, I'm maintaining eye contact. So that's what that is right there. And above me, I have, oh, there it is. There is my Sony ZV-1. That is my, uh, my overhead camera. So I'll use that for doing uh, demonstrations. So let me switch back here and I'll hit my stream deck. And so this is what we've got right here. So if I'm wanting to demonstrate this iPhone, I could show you all the great things about the iPhone with my ZV-1 above me. And if I want to do any sort of product demonstration or if I want to sell this 3D doodler, which I need to do a product video for, which is why I have it sitting at my desk right now, um, I, could, uh, I could certainly do that. So we'll switch back over to my main uh, camera. What else do we have? I think that covers it. And other, you know, I've got a newer um, light that I got uh, thanks to the suggestion of our friend Kirk Nugent. Of course, Ecam is running uh, the entire show. We've got some Viltrox uh, key lights going on there, and we have a Mac Mini, 16 gigs of RAM running there. Oh, this is a little thing here. I didn't put this in the carousel, Alec, but. This is uh, something that allows me to charge my iPhone um, uh, wirelessly, but then I can keep the dongle underneath it. Um, oh, cool. Anyway, so that is, yeah, that's everything on the desk. Nice. I love to uh, I love to see other people's uh, <laughs> streaming setups because we always see this view of them, just, you know, what's, <laughs> what's, what's in, right. on camera, and it's always nice to see the, the sort of setup. Uh, one of the things that uh, you've got going on there is just the fact that, and, you know, using these tools that we've got like Ecamm and like the ATEM, that you can actually really make the recording side of things, you know, pretty frictionless. So it is just using the Stream Deck or the Stream Pedal or the, whatever it is, the ATEM, to just sort of flick between those things. So you're focused more on just delivering the content. Uh, and I think that that's something that I think people perhaps don't realize if they're not used to doing this sort of stuff or not live streaming that they imagine that there's a whole load of uh, setup for each individual shot and things like that i mean my camera's just been on for for a year <laughs> and everything's just here and i just come in flick the yeah. lights on and and everything's ready to go so it's always just cool to see other people's setups and how they're they're working with that yeah and it's purely just because when we go live or when i do a product video ultimately i need to demonstrate and you probably saw when i went to that shot that uh i'm on the screen i know you've got it adjusted but the full screen there we go the, uh -huh. we're both hitting stream decks it's very <laughs> meta here i'm my face is still on the screen mm -hmm. and so this is when i do a product video and i'm talking about whatever it is again we're going back to here i can do an unboxing but my face live is still on the screen mm -hmm. it isn't me editing uh anything it is me going through whatever i'm going through um, and my face is, is still on the screen and I still can look right directly at what I'm doing, see exactly what I'm doing, keep eye contact because it, you know, in terms of, you know, live selling or, or live solving, I think the eye contact is, is absolutely key. I think if, if you're doing a product video or a live stream and you're not showing your face, I think there's a, just the number of people that are like, What's going on with that person? Is yep. they why won't they want why won't they show their <laughs> face? What is it? You know, maybe they're inquisitive, but are they going to trust you to buy something? I don't know. 
Yeah, I think that's a good point there. Being on 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 screen at the same time, and and it's it all helps to build that sort of connection with uh, with people as well. Mm -hmm. I'm uh, definitely yeah. more of a fan of videos that feature somebody rather than <laughs> just them behind the camera. Uh, yeah, well, I can't absolutely. believe we are at the top of the hour. I do just want to ask you quickly about, um, I always ask for a book recommendation and you'd got a book that I hadn't actually read yet. So it's definitely straight into uh, my uh, my reading list, but perhaps you can tell us a little bit about that book that you mentioned, the uh, Create Something Awesome book. Right, Roberto Blake, uh, Create Something Awesome. Uh, he came out with that, I want to say three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And um, Roberto, if you do not follow him uh, yet and you don't know who he is, please do. He's a fantastic content creator. Um, and I mean, before the word creator economy uh, was even coined, uh, this person was uh, was the czar of it. So, um, and Create Something Awesome uh, is a fantastic book because it, it tells his story, but it also, it also, I don't want to say gives you secrets, but, you know, he covers podcasting, he covers uh, video, he covers YouTube, he covers a, a number of different things. But I, I had particular interest in the podcasting section um, and just the, the impact of it, because I think a lot of times, you know, and Alec, I know this, this will be an audio podcast, is that a lot of people will look at podcasting and they think it's just not as, like it's, like it's subpar almost to video. And yes, video is hot. And yes, we're doing both, right? But I think there is a number of people that don't realize that podcasting is very intimate format. And mm -hmm. so a, a lot of people just prefer it. They prefer to listen to it while they're on their commute. They prefer, you know, while they're walking their dog, while they're out for a run. I know I do when I go for, for my runs to have that audio uh, in my ears. And so it's, it's also paramount that, that, um, that you have your audio act together. And so an audio podcast will help you do that. You'll notice things like echoey rooms and clicky audio. And if somebody's got earbuds in and their microphone is rubbing against the collar uh, as opposed to, and I know that's a perfectionism thing, but trust me, if your audio is not on point, it doesn't matter how great your video is. And so I think that that's just a lot of that is, is sort of reiterated and underlined in, in this book by Roberto Blake. So highly recommended. Love that book. It's in my list. I'll definitely be uh, listening to that one next. <laughs> well, we're running over Amazing. a little bit. I want to be conscious of your time, but perhaps you could tell people where's the best place to go and find you. I've obviously left links to all of the places in the show notes and in the description and so on. Uh, but where's the, uh, the sort of best place for people to find you? And, uh, you know, what would you like to, uh, to put out there for people to go and take a look at? Yeah, I made it easy and quick. It's chrisstone.contact. So if you go to chrisstone.contact, uh, that will take you to all of my stuff. It doesn't matter if you want to follow me on TikTok or Instagram or Twitter or, or LinkedIn. I love to, uh, you know, I'm on all of those platforms. I probably, you know, from a business standpoint, spend a good bit of time on LinkedIn. Uh, but I love to have fun on Instagram and, and some other things as well. And uh, there you can kind of like check out some of the shows that I've been on, some of the uh, podcasts that uh, I edit as a, as a uh, part of Cast Ahead and certainly as of Dealcasters. You can always find us at dealcasters.live. Uh, that's where you can get all of our shows uh, and uh, all that good stuff. I really love that page. It's, uh, it's, I'm just showing it on, on screen for those, <laughs> those just listening, but I really love the way that you've got all your contacts, but you have also got all of the different things, the different things you've been on. It's just a really nice format. Uh, I think I might be copying that for a page on my site. Thank you. It's <laughs> Taplink. Yeah, taplink.cc, I believe it is. That's what I, I used for that. It's it's like a link tree, basically, yeah. and you go in and you create your own banners, and, and uh -huh. it's it's all... You know, you can, it's dynamic. You can change it at any, any given time. Embed YouTube videos, uh, hyperlink, uh, you know, out to anywhere. You could do different pages within it. So, right. Um, yeah, it's a great little site. Cool stuff. Well, thank you once again, Chris, for being here. It's, uh, I could have chatted to you, for, you uh, for, for hours longer. <laughs> but as I say, I want to be conscious of your time. I just want to say thank you again so much for all that you do for the uh, the community and helping uh, folks like me just getting started on Amazon. Uh, I really appreciate all that you are doing. Thank you, man. We'll continue to do it until this thing uh, flourishes and, and everyone else can with us. So thanks again, Alec. I appreciate you having me on the show. Cool. I'm really pleased to be a part of it. <laughs> Well, that's it for another show, but I'll be back uh, next week with another show of uh, 
another great conversation as always if you're listening on audio you may want to check out the video of this just to see the sort of behind the scenes of uh, chris's studio as well um and if you want to join me next week i'm going to have another great guest and another great conversation so until then have a great week and i'll see you next time